if you have a spouse or a family member or a friend in the military, chances are you know what this is. So what I'm talking about is the uniform pile, the decommissioned uniform pile. If you're not familiar with the way things work in the Coast Guard and the military is they have to wear these to work, but after several months, several years, depending on how they take care of them, they obviously get faded and then they're not allowed to wear them to work anymore because they don't look as good as they should. The project today is making these uniforms into a bag. I'm gonna try to make it nice and easy. There's not a lot on the internet about how to do this, so let's hope it goes okay. First of all, you don't need a huge pile of uniforms for this bag. Just one coat is gonna cover the entire project. You also do not need any fancy sewing skills. This is a great beginner sewing project. I can promise you, if I can do this, so can you. So as for the lining and the accent, get creative. You probably have some materials at home in your closet you're not wearing. I'm gonna use this as accent material. This is a pair of Acceleration, so Target brand, Junior's brand, wide leg floral pants. I got these from a Plato's Closet, 90% off sale. They were originally priced $6, so 90% off. Very inexpensive material. Last thing is optional, but something you'll wanna consider if you want a bag that's a little bit thicker and heavy duty. I'm talking about fusible interfacing. This is mine, it's mid-weight, super easy to use. You just iron it onto your material and it makes the perfect durable and honestly easier to sew fabric for beginners like me. I'm gonna put a link to this exact interfacing in the description from Amazon. You can also find it at places like Joann's Fabric and Walmart. So to get started, I ironed all of my pieces so the fabric was crease-free and ready to sew. Then I took this Coast Guard uniform jacket and cut along the front side seams to separate the front from the back. I measured 16 by 16 inch squares on the front and back of the coat. For the front piece, I of course made sure the buttons down the shirt, the middle of the shirt, was perfectly centered in my 16 by 16 inch square. Now obviously, this is an old military uniform that has been worn a ton, so it is faded with flaws and stains all over the place. My husband works with engines, so as you can imagine, he gets dirty. What I did try to do was cut around the ugliest flaws and stains, but one thing I realized is the back and front of this specific fabric is pretty much the same. So in this case, I did consider which side was in better shape to create the best looking bag. And I cut the second 16 by 16 inch block out of the back of the jacket. And on the back, I had enough material to also cut three four by 16 inch strips to serve as the bottom and sides of my bag. One strip came from up by the neck, the other two from the lower back. To get the most fabric for my floral pants, I opened up and cut through the seam on the inside of each leg. That gave me enough fabric to cut a 16 by 16 inch square from both legs. In this case, I was forced to use pieces that did have seams in them, but since they were just my lining, I really didn't mind about that. I also cut three four by 16 inch squares for the bottom and sides of the lining, just as I had done for the bag itself. Two 16 by 16 inch squares, three four by 16 inch rectangles, three more four by 16 inch rectangles, two big 16 by 16 inch squares. This came from the front. This came from the back. Now I also cut two 16 by 16 inch squares of interfacing and three four by 16 inch squares for the bottom and the sides to match my floral fabric pieces. This pack worked out perfectly with those measurements. There was no extra waste, which was great. Now using an iron, I lined up the interfacing with the floral fabric and I ironed it on the bumpy side of the interfacing touching the wrong side of the floral fabric. So the back of my floral fabric. And now we are ready to sew. Here goes nothing. First thing I did was take the three four by 16 inch squares of uniform fabric put right sides together, plop them down like that, and sew along the ends to form one long strip. I did leave about a half of an inch space from the ends on each side and left those unstitched. 
That makes this next step way easier. I took the back 16 by 16 inch square, pinned right sides together with that strip. Here's what it looks like. What we got here is pins up that. This is what it looks like on the other side. Then I finished up the bag by doing the same thing again, pinning and sewing the front onto the bag as well. Now I did that whole process all over again, but only this time with the floral pant material and the interfacing. So I made one long strip, then I sewed the back on, then the front on. And after that was done, I flipped the shell of my bag inside out and left the lining the way it was, placed the lining inside the bag with the right side of the fabric facing me, and then I kind of poked my fingers in the corners just to make sure that the lining was a perfect fit inside the bag. I measured the circumference of the top of my bag, decided how much material I wanted to kind of show in this little accent piece, and doubled that measurement by two. Then I cut two more pieces of scrap fabric and sewed them together, matching those measurements, then flipped the edges on both sides over about half an inch, ironed them down, then folded the scrap in half and ironed it to create a crease. I then put that crease right along the edge of the bag and top stitched it down as close as possible to that bottom edge of that floral fabric. Now I wanted to add leather straps to kind of get a polished yet earthy natural look. I got these at Joann's, but I think it would be super cool if you had like a leather belt to use. That would be amazing. Well, my husband has some basic tools for leather working. As you can see here, lots of pounding involved here. We made a little box just so we knew it would be super secure. And then I used waxed coated thread to secure these to the purse using a back stitch. So basically you knot your thread, then you bring the needle up and down, and then back up a hole away and back down into that original hole you first came up and just work your way through the box this way. And then of course I added one extra line of security at the top edge of the bag just to kind of keep the straps fastened to the top and also, you know, just make sure it's not gonna break. And that is it. That's all you have to do. I love how this came out. It's the perfect way to upcycle a military uniform that you'd otherwise have to throw away. The fact that it has sides and a bottom also makes it more functional than a basic tote bag. Let me know in the comments what you think about how the bag came out. And if you're looking for another DIY project to upcycle some things, check out the video I'm going to link right here. It is how to do an upcycled t-shirt blanket. It's easy to put together and it's a great blanket that is going to last you a while and make you smile when you use it. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I hope you have a great rest of the day.